Sir, for the only sensational question I can think of. Sensational question? Yes. Huh. All of my gay friends want to know what it was like to sleep with James Dean. James Dean. Oh, well, that's a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's a long time ago, and, uh, um, well, it was experimental, and, uh, um, not really satisfying in any real way as much as it was the anticipation of something was interesting, and, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was like an intellectual concept. I mean, it was an intellectual stimulus and uh, <clears throat> otherwise otherwise it was uh, um, well like I say in the book you know it was two bad boys playing at being bad yeah and and that's what it was and uh, with him it was uh, with him it wasn't really as much a uh, a, uh, a drive towards towards that as much as a sense of uh, being perverse. I mean, be, for pushing him, the envelope again. Pushing the envelope yeah. and 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 being perverse. And uh, of course, you know, looking back on that, I don't know. I've I've uh, I've had a lot of uh, um, different thoughts about that, and and uh, I don't know what it was. But so many people were. Well, I was extremely uh, um, good looking in a lot of ways, sure. and uh, had a lot of people uh, after me. And I got into the Hollywood scene very young in life and uh, lived through it for, for years and years and years, always, uh, always probably never allowing myself to accept uh, a, a feminine, the feminine, you know, the feminine, the woman or whatever it is that's within inside myself, mm -hmm. who, who uh, really essentially has nothing to do with sex whatsoever. And uh, it's the creative drive, but you know, it gets all twisted in and tied into that. And at that time, being an actor, I was an actor, and therefore you're just basically a puppet in a lot of ways, and you're subject to the whims of others, to the, oh. It's a, it's a, it's, I feel very badly for actors in a lot of ways. Although, you know, I have directed and, uh, and uh, produced at times, and uh, you know, I see actors in, in the same way probably that they, uh, uh, <clears throat> that I lived through and had to experience. And, uh, you know, James Dean was, um, James Dean was a very strange person. James, he was very, uh, very withdrawn, very uh, difficult to reach. And uh, a lot of people think that, you know, well, like that one tarot, like that one book, you know, in which I'm interviewed extensively in it, that, uh, that uh, Street of Broken, Boulevard of Broken Dreams, the Paul Alexander book uh, is really way off. I mean, he tries to establish the fact that Jimmy was a gay person. You know, Jimmy was a gay man. That's his premise, and that that's not true. I mean, it's just, that, that that's not true. And Jimmy didn't wouldn't have cared one way or the other. You know, I mean, whether whether you thought he was or whether you thought he wasn't, or whether he was or whether he was, it didn't have any meaning. It didn't have any bearing on him whatsoever. But uh, you know, Alexander brings stresses that point, whereas with Jimmy. Uh, he was very, it was a very ambiguous uh, desires, you know, and his drives were, they weren't, uh, his drives, I think, manifested themselves in his work as an actor. And uh, it was just, uh, he would perform and he was some somebody else other than the person that you knew sitting there. It was almost a time, when you go see the movies, you see East of Eden, or you see Rebel Without Cause, or Giant, which is something else altogether. I don't think he was really even altogether in that. He wasn't really himself so much. But that character that you're observing is not really how he was in real life. That's not how he was. He would climb into that role and and present himself in that way. And I think it was the same thing with his uh, with his uh, you know uh, twiddly diddly fiddling around romances, whether they were guys or girls or whatever. It was the same thing that Jimmy would put himself into some role to go further testing things, going further and, and being intrigued and interested in someone else. And he was always very interested in something that was uh, unusual or bizarre and he, and, he, and he would connect to it. And he connected to it in the same way that the photographer Diane Arbus did. You know, Diane had this, uh, I met her a couple times in New York and, and, and uh, we had a really wonderful time one night at a party because we were talking about uh, 
you know, the, the flea circus on 42nd Street. And she used to go there, and I used to go there, and we, I mean, we never saw each other in there, but we would go there all the time. And that, of course, is where they had freaks. The freaks were there, and, and there were your dwarfs <laughs> there at that time. <laughs> and uh, uh, her, her vision, her view, I mean, uh, it's, it's a vision, you see, it's a view of reality, a view of things that's, that's recreated. And in my own, my own case, my own sense as a writer, I mean, I wound up being a writer. I've been a writer for a long time, but it was the only way I think I finally found that I could speak, you know, and my, I could say, hello world, and the voice kind of resonated and went down the line resonating. And uh, as an actor, I couldn't do it. I wanted to be a painter from very young, early in life. I wanted to be an artist. I, want, I set out to be a painter. I, 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 when I first joined the Army, I went in because I wanted to get on the GI Bill and go study in Paris when I got out, live in a garret and be a painter. And I, that, my paintings, I mean, I sold a lot of paintings. I did a lot of paintings. Uh, I had showings in the Beatnik days, a lot of uh, uh, Beatnik galleries and things. But however, it's like, it was like acting. I can watch myself doing something and it's like the guy, the guy is only partly there, you know? He's only partly there. It's like a motor that's running on four cylinders instead of eight. And uh, that was the same thing, in, that's the same thing with the acting, it's the same thing with painting. So in, in, in writing, I, 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 uh, I mean, I'd rather do other things. I'd rather be a playboy, really, basically. I'd rather be independently, enormously wealthy, yeah. and have a, have a boat. I always wanted to have a boat, and I've never had a boat. And I'd like to have a penthouse in New York. I'd like to have a place in Paris. And I could just do all these different things, you know? I mean, it'd be wonderful. But now I'm impelled to be a writer. So what I'm doing in my, to find my voice as a writer, and you probably can identify with this completely, is to find my voice as a writer I had to go to those places and take risks. In other words, if I I could see myself being I could see myself being this cr crazy man in a garage who's painting these paintings of these big bleeding sides of beef, and that's what he's doing. He's committed to do this. He's committed to this view, and he's continuing to do it. And hopefully, in persisting uh, and continuing and persisting in this, uh, perhaps at some time in life he'll somehow peel away or strip away some little little layer or level of the human condition that we say, hey, you know, uh, you know, geez, that's interesting. I mean, that rings a bell in me, you know. It says something to me. It, 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 it's speaking to me. The guy is speaking to me, you know, somehow. It's just like you're saying, you know, with your thing. Now, you've, you've done some of your performances and some of your poetry. does that to me. I can, it just resonates in me. I feel it. And, and, you know, coupled with your performance and your delivery, you know, as an artist. It, that's why I brought up Texas Chainsaw Massacre, because some of that, so there are moments in that film that are pure, pure, Poetry, absolute poetry. It comes to like a lot of the images of David Lynch. That's absolute poetry. You think, my God, you know, this person, this is the concept that they had in their mind, and they put all this whole mosaic together of all these little things. Uh, you know, it's amazing in a way. You know, and I suppose people have said that to me in some sense about you know you you know this whole this thing you wrote this whole crazy long thing you wrote and putting all of these pieces together. And it just becomes kind of a life, a secondary sort of involuntary energy, a life force, like, like when you're delivering on stage. You're not standing, you're not conscious of yourself. Mm -hmm. see? And I was always, as an actor, conscious of myself. So I, wouldn't lo I couldn't lose myself in a performance such as Jimmy Dean could. He could lose himself in a performance, and other actors can do that. Now, I can lose myself in writing so that there's no longer the self there, and what emerges is, is hmm, this residue, a residue of a vision that someone can carry away with them, yeah. and experience and feel, and maybe it means something in their lives, you know? Yeah. People, they ask me, you know, why I write, and I always tell them, I don't write because I want to, I write because I have to. 
Yeah, because you have to write. There's no, there's no two ways about it. The real writer, you know, the real writer is the writer who's going to continue to write. And you know, I, I, I could see this in myself. I don't write journals anymore, but for, from, God, I don't know. I wrote them for years and years and years. I mean, there's star. I have stacks of them, you know. And I, I, I would, you're, I'm, I'm compelled to write. It's a compulsion. And I know now I don't because it took up too much. It took me away from actually the place where I can have that, that painting, you know, that big bleeding side of beef and, you know, give of myself everything I can over, completely over to it so that it's, it's, it's perfect, you know. You aim for a certain perfection in it, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a perfection, you know. Now, but you also risk, in, in so doing, you risk acceptance, you risk a, a, a wide, you risk a, you're not making cheese balls or buttermilk pancakes, you know, you're not doing that. So, and you're not making, you know, uh, um, McDonald's hamburgers that sell in the billions. You're just not doing that. You're, it's not, you're not formulating what you're doing. You're opening your heart in the sense. You're opening your heart and you're just letting this come out. And there are many people there who are going to say, hey, yeah, right on, you know, I can identify with that. I'm feeling it, I'm experiencing it, you know. It's moving me, it's doing something to me, you know. But there are many, many, many people out there who are going to say, hey, no, I, I don't want that. We don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear anything about, you know, uh, uh, negative views. I don't want to hear anything about somebody throwing dwarf, tossing dwarfs. I don't want to hear about anything that has any homosexual connotation. Sure. I mean, even though now, with the gay world, the gay marketplace, the, the wide, you know, the wide openness of it, at least in our country here now, you know, there is still the majority of people are not accepting of it. Oh yeah. You know, they're not going to accept it. You're going to yeah. have to go somewhere else. You've got to go to New York. You got to go to San Francisco. You got to go to L.A. Well, it's I mean, okay as long as you know, they can't see it. As long as they can't see it, as long as you you keep your your voice back and you keep who you are under wraps, and it's acceptable to them, you know? They do not want to go on the other, the moon is flat. The yeah. moon is one sphere white, there's nothing behind it. There's not two sides behind it. And my whole, my whole thing, you know, at times, is to, is to attempt to say, no, it's a round ball and it's in the sky, and it has a white side and a black side. And if you take either side away, you have only half of the thing. Yeah. And therefore it does not, it cannot last, it will die. It dies, <laughs> just as most people are, to, in my estimation, walking dead. 